Hey, everybody. Good morning. I want to show you something here. I had an epiphany this morning. I want to wait for people to log on here. Here we go. Oh, I'm going to turn off my phone. I woke up. I had an epiphany. And I'll be sharing that with you. It was... I've been waiting for this, okay, for like about ah, um, four years, okay? So here I want to show you my first image. i got to find it here. I saw this and I kind of had to laugh, although it's kind of not funny, all right? <laughs> so here we go. Never, ever think outside the box. Ever. And you know what, you guys? I was feeling creatively, exceedingly boxed in. I have my little box for my ties that I want to do things with. And I have ideas and I've been out and playing with them and all that. And this morning, I, oh gosh, I, this morning, what, before I opened my eyes, this idea, ideas, they started coming. I was willing to think out of the box. I have not felt this exhilarated for, again, four or five years. I mean, I had the whole thing with my family, my parents and then COVID, and then the surgery, and it's just, it's wiped everything out of me, everything, but this morning, mm -hmm. so I've got some things, what we're ultimately going to do today is um, uh, deconstruct some ties and show you how I do it, but also I'm going to show you where my brain is going on this whole thing, but I've got some show and tell for you as we uh, get going this morning. Okay, so uh, um, Christina sent me this. Uh, actually, Suzanne, Suzanne sent me this. This is from the Mancuso Show in Pennsylvania. And, oh, I hear my buddy. Kitty. And um, this is Christina Wickert's quilt, of which John says she, he's seen her here on the... Um, message board as people type in. Guys, this got best of show. Again, Suzanne, thank you for sending it in to me. I love that I've got spies out there. Um, it's done all with silk and it's hand quilted. It is absolutely delicious so much that it got the big fat blue ribbon. Look at the, the binding, the border, the finishing of it with the little scallops. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. What's the matter? I know, I know. John goes, oh my God, I love that border. Uh, yes, there's a reason. Congratulations, Christina. There's a reason you won. And again, this was our BOM a few years back. But then here's a, a close-up of it. Hand quilted. <laughs> yeah, just beautiful. And then I have another spy out there who's often here, and that's Paul. Paul sent me this this morning. Misty Cole made this, and I think it was the Wisconsin Quilt Show. And um, I love it. I love that these are hanging in shows and that they're um, showing your creativity and how interesting you can take an idea and then, and then change it. And I got to tell you, that background is fascinating to me because to me... It's like the Windy City. I, that background is just amazing. So Misty Cole, we take our um, hats off to you. Okay, so now I want to talk about sharing and friendship and community. My dear friend, Lois Johnson, uh, moved from Grass Valley to um, upstate New York. And in her neighborhood, they have a thing called the Hillsboro Cove Art Show. She's in kind of a planned community, and the idea is, say on Saturday, think about this in your neighborhood, everybody puts out whatever art they do, and then it becomes kind of a stroll, 
And so she was like, oh, do I do it? Do I not do it? Is my stuff good enough? That's what she gets from me. <laughs> and she sent me pictures of um, her yard. Look at those quilts. And isn't it interesting, this happens at Alden Lane too, well it did happen, where the sun sprinkles through and it changes the imagery of the quilts. She has a command of color that is just amazing. So then here's this, her self-portrait, and please look through the front door and up left, up the loft for the COVID quilt. That was our cave fast, facet mystery quilt. And it's perched so high up in her um, house that it would have been impossible to take it down and get it back up properly. Okay, speaking of COVID, she had COVID while well, this is going on. And it was a relapse. She came back from um, England, had COVID. She might have gotten it at the airport in New York. They're saying it's pretty bad there, but it has rebounded and come back. And that's her dear Joey Hannah that I've known since birth. And then right behind her, Grace. And um, Grace, if you recall, if you've been watching these things with regularity, Grace is the one, the little girl that there was the video of her singing at the sewing machine. And it was so cute. And, and they are a musical family. And it was within the rhythm of the sewing machine. So this is a quilt that Lois made for Grace. Grace has glasses. And so a lot of the little girls have glasses. But it's like all of the occupations that Grace should consider being as she grows into an incredible human being. And trust me, Grace has a good start on that. So what happened was a woman came by. I don't know quite how this pay played out because she did have COVID and had, had to stay away. And she, Lois wanted to do this tie project. She didn't know what, she doesn't know what she wants to do. I'm hoping today I don't scare everybody away or give them ideas. But um, a neighbor came over and her husband was a professional ballroom dancer. And she said, I mean, okay, this is how it works, people. She said, okay, I love your quilts. Do you have any need for ties? <laughs> Look what she got. I'm going to tell you, other people had picked through them already, but to get light ties is like finding a tooth in a hand. I mean, talk about the jackpot. And then, then it's those dark ones that are in there that we'll be able to use, I'm sure, quite sparingly and add a huge pop to the whole thing. So this is about sharing. I love the idea of an art stroll in your neighborhood if you're set up that way. And people just get to meet each other and see all the talent that's in the area. I just, everything about it. Now, here, here's the thing that's kind of an off subject, but I... It's not an off subject. So we are going to Maui um, in February. We were invited. And basically, this is the view of where we'll be staying. It's just absolutely beautiful. This is the Maui Marriott where they have been housing people, et cetera, et cetera. So in setting up our plane tickets, I uh, called the concierge. And I wanted to know about getting from the airport to the place. And she thought I was talking about like right now because we won't have a car. And right now it's tough because um, the Uber drivers and all that, guess what? They lost their cars. <laughs> they lost their cars. They have a van that runs to the airport. And they're working on that, and hopefully that person will have a van. And I said, well, we're not going until February. And she said, oh, you'll be fine. And we started talking about the fires. She said she said to me, she had lived in Maui her whole life, or in, on the islands her whole life, but I think she said Maui. And Maui people take care of each other, okay? That is kind of how they look at it. She said to me, she said to me, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to dissuade anybody from doing anything, but, um, the Red Cross came in a week later, uh, took up a lot of the hotel rooms. I mean, it's kind of, ugh. um, in the next eight days, this beautiful woman I was talking to is going to be displaced like everybody else. 
because they've got to get the tourism back up and going. She told me that she actually spent nights um, at the airport sleeping on the floor, okay? She um, told me tales that I don't really want to repeat, but what she did say to me was, when you come, be kind and gentle with people, and they're probably going to want to just talk. And she talked for at least 20 minutes, and I listened and listened and listened. And I said, you know, I'm feeling kind of dirty about coming, to tell you the truth. And she said, no, 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 no. She said, um, it is, we are a tourism place. I mean, we are. That's it. And we've got to get the money and get it going, which is what the Maui Quilt Shop told me. Okay. And then I said, well, I've been talking to the Maui Quilt Shop. And all of a sudden, everything clicked for this woman on the phone. She is seeing quilts everywhere with this displaced people. And she said, I mean, I know it's a dying art. I said, oh, no, it's not a dying art. Don't go there with me. And uh, she said, it's just, you see babies with baby quilts. She said, you don't see it like this, not like this. So I applaud the Maui Quilt Shop, who will be taking donations, um, will be taking donations through the end of September. But the other thing is if you can't, you know, send a quilt or whatever, she reiterated what uh, Maui, the quilt shop told me. If you want to give money, go to the food bank. With a couple days after, people were starving, okay? And I think things are getting under control. But the food bank and then the other thing, and I don't know, you'd have to Google it, uh, diapers and formula. I mean, those are, you know, ugh. so if you want to give money, that's where I would go. I would not go through some big shot organization. Just my opinion. So let's talk about this morning. When I woke up, I, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I, for the silk class, but I found myself stepping out of the kitty litter box. <laughs> So I'm out of this box. I'm out of this box. I'm going to use this box, but I'm out of trying to set it the way it says that I told you I was going to set it. I don't want to do that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I got hold of Ricky this morning, <coughs> and you might have seen the show <coughs> where there was this quilt. And I believe he acquired it from Julie Silver, who has a great resource for antique quilts. And um, he said, I want to make a quilt out of this. And I said, no, no, I'm making a quilt out of this. But then he bought it. And then we decided we were going to do a challenge on the show. So this is the quilt as we look to the next two imageries, okay? This is the quilt that he made. And note what stuck out to him were those bullseyes and um, kind of drunkard's path bow ties things. The same with me. And then you've got the nine patches and stuff. By the way, <clears throat> he gifted me this on the show. And I finally got it because in the midst of all chaos, he'd lost the label. And now I have it. And then, and we didn't see these before the show aired. And then this is mine. <clears throat> and isn't that interesting that we both zeroed in on the bullseyes? Mine is done with, okay, his was done with his hand eyes. Mine was done with Kaif and Tula. So I started thinking about, and how I made this, let's start with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did the bullseyes first, and then I put them on the design wall, and then I started filling in. And that's where something like this comes in handy because everything is mathematically fits together. So I started thinking, I mean, those quilts energize me, groove me out, beyond no measure. So let's see. The, yeah. So here is another quilt that I saw at Houston, and I alluded to this quilt on Monday, um, and I snapped a picture of it. Chaos. I mean, that's what's going on. But I looked at all the design components that were in this quilt. I mean, there's so many different blocks. I got something, honey. Thank you.
Yeah, I got it. Thank you. So that's when I went, because I'm all into silks, and made this. And this is the quilt that I showed you that was two inches smaller on the bottom than the top. And what I did was I went, let me get rid of this one. I looked at the border on this and loved how it, the whole thing was held together. But then that's what got me in trouble with this because I couldn't square it up. So I, and because it's silk. So I ended up remaking it out of cottons. And frankly, it's a thousand times better. Now, I'm doing things that I'm telling you not to do. Like at the bottom left hand side, you see little flying geese. I mean, a lot of, not a lot of points around the edge, but enough to make your, you shiver. And what's going to come in to play is technical excellence. And I am not an excellent technician. So I will show you the best ways I know how to get excellent results as I build my quilt in front of you. Now this one, okay, when I made it and put it on the wall, on the bottom left hand side you can see some oranges in there. I mean you can see them real clearly, uh, you know, in the upper right hand half, but they were missing on the lower left hand side. So let me show you what I did. Here, here's, 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 here's the price of tuning in and what you learn. <laughs> I literally cut out some print and piece fuse light. I appliqued the size of those squares. I finished applique it on that product, the size of the squares that I wanted to cover, and then I machine applique it down. I don't think I did it by hand, but with a super, super, super small blanket stitch, stitch and a thread that matches. And that's how I got it, so I fixed it. Because guys, it was wrong without those things in the bottom left-hand side. It, it was just wrong. So I am kind of the blind leading the blind, but with that, I'm hoping we can learn a lot. And then this, last but not least, is another crazy, quilt that I made based on antiques, but I think this might have been the height of my falling apart with my parents. <laughs> yeah, this is what it was. Um, here we go. So I know this is an antique quilt that I saw, and I know that those flip and sews were in that quilt as well as whatever that, is that anvil? I'm not sure what that block is, but then I just went crazy for cave. Well, I could do the same thing with silk. So what I commissioned to my brain last night was to go through this box of, oh, doggone it, I thought I put it out. Um, oh, the yeah, idea is over here. So I started going through my cards, okay? And the first one, let me get my little lap desk here, that I came up with, all right, um, I haven't done two cameras for a while. Okay. The first one that's that talked to me, okay, talk about breaking all the rules. <laughs> right here. No, 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 no. But gosh, I thought, wouldn't this be beautiful in pink and blue? I mean, really, truly, wouldn't this be beautiful? And then I flipped it over. This was before this morning. And I saw, I thought, okay, I could do a 36-inch one, all right? and then do things around it. Well, with a tie, I can't do a 36 inch one because the I need some nine and seven eighths inch blocks and that's just not gonna happen with a tie. But this was haunting me and I don't know that I'm not gonna do this sometime now that I feel like I'm back in the saddle. So as I went through the box, this one just kept coming to me over and over and over. It's so simple. It's so easy, um, and uh -huh. so in thinking about the first one that Ricky and I did, starting with the circles, I think I'm going to start with the heart, all right? And then, rather than, than trying to make everything matchy, matchy, perfect, perfect, somehow, let's say I make this in 12 inches, let's just say, okay? I thought of this, and actually I think this combination is suggested in the book. So I've got my little churn dash, 
Now, the beautiful thing about this block is that it's very simple. So why couldn't I do some six inches? Let me see if the instructions are there. Yeah, right there, right there. So, so I could do even eight inches and then no, eight from 12 is four and then figure something out. But I realized as soon as I stepped away from, well, you've got to put it in this set or that set, I was set free. I'm just going to work with blocks I like. Okay, this is scary stuff. I'm asking you to step out of the box, <laughs> which is why I put up the very, very first cartoon. All right. So I'll go back to that so you can see it. I want you to think about stepping outside the box, out of your comfort zone. Because I know it's funny at retreat, we have people there that are rule followers, and you know who you are. And um, don't be a rule follower. Now, is this going to be a slam dunk for everybody? Oh no, it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard but it's going to be really fun. And again, if you want to do something kind of simple, the quilt behind me is just squares, half square triangles, and rectangles, right? Um, Lois said, do, I Lois, did you like your quilt show? Um, do you think that simple is best with silk ties? I think if you're playing with them for the first times, you want to kind of go simpler. I'm willing to challenge myself with these things here, with these little triangles. Now, as I build my blocks, I'm also gonna give class, I'm gonna intersperse things on like, okay, so how do you get a perfect half square triangle? How do you? Because it is possible. <laughs> yes, it is. So, so um, there's that. Okay, are most ties cut from the fabric on the bias? Yes, I believe so. Is it Michael or Michelle? I think it's Michael. Um, yes, I believe, I, rumor has it, they're all cut on the bias. Yeah, so you really do want to stabilize it. And then Lois, and talking to her this morning when I was so excited, um, I think she brought up Rayon. And I, I don't know, I don't know Rayon. And I said, well, if you asked me this right here live, I'd say, well, Lois, I'd say, I don't know, tell us how it works. Um, <clears throat> No, I, uh, Margo, I used, um, I did not use an, adhe well, an adhesive backing. Yes, it's fabric prep. Once, it's super, super sheer. You could hand quilt through it. One side has a little bumpy on it, and you iron it, the bumpy down onto the back side of the tie, and then cut it out. Now, I expressed on Monday that my friend Robin said you could do all the components of your tie by lining them up, you know, fat to skinny, fat to skinny, and then just fabric prep it, um, I th it's gonna get expensive. So I'm tending to overcut my blocks a little bit out of silk, and then I will um, put the fabric prep on it, Quilter Select Fabric Prep, and then I will trim it down to what I need it to be. All right, so let's talk about deconstructing ties. And I just randomly, chose one okay all right I, I i chose this i thought it was really quite pretty i don't know why i hadn't what well is it dirty i probably should wash it but nope here we go okay so first thing is when you have a tie of course you have the big end and typically it's held together with this um something like this oh boy i need to get my glasses or this could get real ugly real fast. Yeah, I got my cataracts done, but for fine work, I need glasses. It's a barefooting kind of day in Livermore. <laughs> All right, so I have just clipped this. Okay, there's another one. Um, I'm gonna say this is a very expensive tie. I can feel it and look at, shoot, I might've made a mistake there. I think I did. I cut a little hole. Eee. Holy smokes, it's Fort Knox. You know, I'm going to get my seam ripper. Wouldn't you know, I'd, I'd pick Fort Knox for this whole thing. I can't believe this. 
I just ripped a hole in it. Oh my God. I can't believe this tie. Okay, they were almost to the end of it. This is this buttoned up. Oh, that makes me sick. I cut a hole in it. But I'm doing that to make you feel better for when you do. Then what I'm going to do is I've got to take this off. And I would hang on to these. I think I showed you a tie on Monday where the artist used these in the border. By the way, I'm so proud of our TQS people that enter the quilts and tell the story. And um, I mean, you watch Carol make hers out of wool that's just, I, I adored. So this is something you do when you find your favorite Netflix thing that you can look down and not have to watch every innuendo. May I suggest Friday Night Lights? I mean, I don't even like football. All right, so that's off. So I'm going to put that aside. All right, then I'm going to take this off. You know, that's the part where the, well, maybe I'm going to pull this first. See how I just pull and the thing gathers and it gathers and it gathers. Oh, wow, that's some thread there. Okay. Now, before I get too far down, I've still got to deal with this here. Before I strip it out too much, what I am going to do is on the pointy end, I'm going to cut that off. I could strip it all the way down to it, but I'm going to save this because I saw that on the edge of ties too. So that's going to go up there with the tie. Just so I hope you all know I'm breaking out in a sweat here. <laughs> yes, I am. Your fearless leaders carrying a lot of fear right now. <laughs> Man, this, I can't even, there we go. Woo! Okay, so that goes all the way down there, right? Right? Oh, another one of those things. Ah! I'm kind of glad I got a hard one. Kind of makes me happy. You know what? Forget it. That's coming off too. This is the hardest tie I've had to um, deconstruct, guys, period, which I find absolutely fascinating. Okay, then we go back down to this guy. And basically, I'm going to... Oh! Well, that's exciting. <laughs> I just popped it. Okay. If you have questions, um, please put them down right now. So I'll be there in a minute. Now, how do I know this is an expensive tie? Other than the, the, the silk is just flipping glorious to feel. Down here, typically ties are lined with some cheapo fabric not this tie it's lined with the same fabric so here you've got a, a whole lot of extra fabric that you can use so i would cut it out or you could pick it apart whatever you want man this is a beautiful tie and again, I got mine from a pediatrician. I'm telling you, put the word out. You'll be able to get ties. Well, it actually go to, oh, I'm not gonna say, go to Capitol Hill. Apparently they're losing some ties there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this stuff. Okay, so. I've got another beautiful piece that I can use here. I mean, that's a pretty substantial size, right? And then I'm going to pull this out. Garbage, unless somebody has a great idea. I have to laugh that I got the most difficult one to take apart. But look at that yardage. Let me bring this up a little bit. To give you an idea, I'll put my hand in there. That's a nice yardage. And interesting, it stays pretty fat for quite a while. They usually don't. Wow. Okay, just gorgeous. So that's what you do. I would wash it first, 
and then uh, deconstruct it. And if you missed the, the washing thing, we talked about um, that on, on Monday, last, last issue. So let me, okay, they're easier to take apart because after you wash, Jeannie says, because the stitching gets loose. Um, oh, the quilt made by Chris, made by Chris Wicker belongs to Genesee's Valley Quilt Guild that Lois and I belong to in Rochester. She is amazing. I have to tell you guys that to, when all these things start coming in together via the internet and, and connectivity, it's amazing. I mean, even like the lady in Maui going, I'm seeing all these quilts. Carol, your mom worked in a tie factory when she was young. Okay, here we go. I save the thread as, oh, this is interesting, um, as it is strong for other sewing things. As for the, also the inner stabilizer a friend wanted for tailoring face seams. Huh. Okay. Well, I know that Kristen, who works with us, loves to do clothing, so maybe I should ask her if she wants it. Okay, Sue, I don't know why this screen is frozen. I think it's okay on my end. So, oh, one of the ties had a beautiful white wool inside. I used it as trim on some Santa hat pin cushions. Yeah, this is wool. Huh. Yeah, I'm not going to share it, Kristen. Sue Spargo. <laughs> so, anyways, that's that's what's going on today. Um, someone said that was a hundred and thirty-five dollar tie. I believe it. In fact, I was going to go look up the brand and see. I got lucky. And Lois got lucky. <laughs> you know, I just got super lucky. So I'm surprised that isn't the first one I grab because usually my hand goes to wherever things cost money. <laughs> it's just, a, it's a terrible dilemma of mine. So, okay, people, this has been fabulous. And on Monday, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I might start piecing that heart thing, or I might talk about how to get a perfect half square triangle because I know a lot of you are going to be entering into that. Give me a vote right here. Give me a vote. I know it takes a minute to load. Or maybe I can take it like you don't care. <laughs> Everybody hung up on me. <laughs> oh. Heart. Perfect triangles. One to one. Hasker to heart. Crayon, tell me about your box and where to get it. Hasker triangle. Okay, half square triangle wins. Then we'll then we'll do, then we will well on the heart. Let me see. Yeah, well, on the heart we do need them. Okay, let's do that. All right. So hey, everybody, have a great day. I'm hearted out today. Um, wishing you the best, and I'll see you on Monday, okay? I'm looking. Bye.